Welcome back to Exposing the Dirty Few. In my last video, um, I did some uh, a coverage on Jason's 1902 driest year in Australia. <clears throat> and I, of course, leave out the most important information because I'm a dope. Um, what happened in 1902 in Australia is a fine red dust uh, blanketed Australia. And that was the Phoenix event effects in Australia. Um, the only way I can think that why it was Australia's driest year is because that fine red dust would have absorbed any moisture in the atmosphere, causing it to be one of the driest years. I don't know why I left it out, but uh, that's what I do. I hope you don't mind me talking about Jason. Often I find his work absolutely fascinating. And um, yeah, anyway, uh, here's some more. Okay, let's listen to a few uh, few details, and then we'll have some fun. Starting the Sumerian histories, quote, in text after text, whenever the starting point was recalled, it was always this, 432,000 years before the deluge, the Dengir, or the God. 432,000 years. So I'll expand more on that after we've done all this, um, because it literally struck a chord. <laughs> 432,000 equals 133 and as I've shown you before 603 score and 6 equals 133 and if you type in 133 equals 666 that also equals 133 but 432 megahertz Let, we'll get back to that though where the gods came to Earth. 432,000 is a number appearing in mythological systems around the world, according to Giorgio de Santinia and Hertha von Deschon in the famous epic work, Hamlet's Mill. In many of my videos, we have covered this 1,200-year period from the descent of the Watchers in 3439 BC to the Great Flood. In uh, 120,000, was it? 120,000, which... This is all wrong, by the way, because, but this is what they're... 122,000. Uh, Sorry, it's 120,000, you idiot. You idiot. 120... One hundred and twenty thousand. One hundred and you idiot. One hundred and twenty-two thousand years. One hundred and twenty thousand years is also one hundred and thirty-three. So what? This isn't years. This is days. That's why it's wrong. But this is what it's promoted as. So you can kind of see the deception that they're trying to do because it's 120,000 years, when it's supposed to be days. In BC to the Great Flood in 20... Famous epic work, Hamlet's Mill. In many of my videos, we have covered this 1,200-year period from the descent of the Watchers in 3439 BC to the Great Flood in 2239 BC, which is exactly... 34... Sorry, it was 1,200 years, you idiot. Which is, uh... 1,000... Two hundred years, and that adds to one hundred and twenty. So one thousand two hundred years, and then you <laughs> add another zero on it, you get one thousand two hundred years. So there's part of the deception as well. And it was thirty-four. BC to the Great Flood, famous epic work, Hamlet's Mill. In many of my videos, we have covered this twelve hundred year period from the descent of the Watchers in thirty-four thirty-nine BC. To Flood in 2239 BC. 2239 BC. 2239. Can we get another 133? 
how we've moved along through this and have a listen to this one. In DC, the appearance of the Watchers was indeed the date of an epic cataclysm. Charles Piazzi Smith in the year 1880, astronomer royal of Scotland, determined that the descending passage of the Great Pyramid of Giza marked attention to the ancient pole star Alpha Draconis, otherwise known as the Eye of the Dragon. Okay, so the ancient pole star known as the Eye of the Dragon from Scotland with a guy named Smith. Um, do you know that Smith is more than likely a, a Jewish surname? Just putting it out there. Um, and it was the ancient pole star, which is the only star that really doesn't move in the <laughs> in the sky. Everything circles around that. So it's 34, 33 and 34. So rule of Kalel, it's 33 both. And Draconius, so if it's uh, Draconius is a a dragon. Some, or if you prefer, we can just go dragons, which is the same. And what are drag dragons? They are reptilians. Oh, it's a 51. Did you know that if we put in the reptilians, we get a 66? The spin out thing, I'm digressing here at the moment, um, that if we cut that out of there, V is 15, Reptilians is 51. So 51 and 15. Uh, Donut talks about these two numbers all the time. I don't think he's ever added the two together because you get 66 out of that. And Reptilians is 33. But the, which is the most commonly used word in the world, 20, 8, 5. That's 33. That spun me out. So anything that adds to 51, as I've said many times before, anything that adds to 6 equals 33. So the reptilians, and of course comes down to 3, which is the rule of 3. He mentioned 120,000 years, event 201, 2 and 1 is 3, 121 and 2 is 3. It, uh, it just keeps going on and on. All right, um, what else we got? Bellamy thoroughly documented the mechanism by which the, the capture of flood occurred. The moon captured in Earth's gravity and remaining here causing a cataclysm. It is the Anunnaki Nur 600 year epic calendar that gives us the date when this occurred. And in the Sumerian records we find that it was at the appearance of the moon too that a new branch of Anunnaki appeared called the Igigi. Okay, okay. The Igigi, um, they're, that name again that we can't mention. Um, and this lines up with the moon as an artificial construct. Um, basically, <laughs> the moon is a death star and it was the cause for the great flood of the vapor canopy, which is called the Great Deluge. Deluge. There we go again, 51 and 50, 66 and 55, the great deluge, and the moon caused that. And as far as I'm concerned, um, as I've said before from the video that was made in 2021 by a rabbi saying 3,333 years, why is Israel still burning? Apparently in 2021, 3,333 years before that, um, Moses went to Mount Sin AI, Sin is the ancient name for the moon. Artificial intelligence X is what Jason talks about. So that's where they got the download on how to run everything. So see my hour long video. Got any questions, ask me. But that's the ancient name for the moon there. It appeared. Um, and just in case someone's watching or Jason's watching, I doubt whether he will. Um, but the sky was a purple color, apparently. There was no sun. Um, and it was a purple colour. Is this the reason why the royals use purple? Because they were aware of what the sky was before the sun was visible. And also, before we just listen to a little bit more to confirm that, um, was the call out by Klaus Schwab of the Great Reset, um, was he warning everybody all the elites about the reset in 20 years when the phoenix returns in 20 in 18 years sorry in 2040 
Who knows? Academia texts and the Egyptian Turin papyrus have the moon existing before the sun. Ancient American traditions have Venus existing before the sun, and this is mentioned in the 1870s by Gerald Massey in his lectures. This is because the vapor canopy hid the sun by day, but magnified Venus and the stars at night. The sun was born when the vapor canopy collapsed, known as the Great Flood. This was the birth of the sun. It began all the dynasties called Children of the Sun. The Sumerian records hold that when the Anunnaki arrived, they found the sky covered in a dense cloud cover. The text reads, daylight did not shine. Moonlight had not yet emerged. The ancient Near Eastern tablets translated by Dr. Malachi York in the Holy Tablets, a gigantic book, monumental research. It took me a long time to read this, but he mentioned specifically that the end of a 600-year period, the Anunnaki created mankind. This is in Shabbat, page 9. 600-year period. 600-year period. Is that what I wrote in? The Sorry, sorry. The 600 years, so the 600 years. That seems to be a very, very strong amount of numbers that he's called, called out 600 before, 600 after, because it's the 600 years, and that's 66. That's just uh, nuts. Anyway, what else we got? But he mentioned specifically that the end of a 600-year period, the Anunnaki created mankind. This is in Shabbat. Now, by the way, mankind in simple is 66. Yes, so M A. -N. Will you work it out? Mankind is 66 in simple. One to 26, A to Z. 99, column 1, and section 471 through 74 on page 173, column 1. Let me reiterate, what we have here is a scholar of Near Eastern Antiquities admitting that he found in a text a reference to a 600-year period involving the Anunnaki. 4039 BC is 144 years, a golden proportion number, before the year 3895 BC, which was year one of the pre-flood world's calendar, established an ancient chronology. 144,000. How many people know about that number? Um, this is probably the a pretty cool find that I've done. Apparently, um, there's going to be at the end of when the the final reset in twenty forty six, which he's just got written there, uh, one hundred and forty four thousand people will volunteer to stay behind to help people make it through because they've been downloaded with the information or whatever, because we're all volunteers here. But when you type in 144, thousand, you get 138. 138. 138 is the Phoenix timeline every 138 years. So 144,000 people are going to stay behind to help people after the 138 year period. Like, come on. That's pretty dang close, isn't it? I know, I, I don't seem to resonate with any other decoders, whether it's, um, not that I've tried Donut, but um, I've left the 303 years of Freemasonry comment that I make all the time a lot I try not I don't really promote my channel I just hope that people will hit that hit that avatar and have a look but whether it's waters above whether it's um uh, Logan from decode your reality I haven't heard back from Jason yet not that he's a decoder um Zachary Hubbard does fabulous work uh, I, I don't know what I do wrong but uh, obviously it's not meant to be so, um, all right, let's get back to 432. I might as well just do it while I'm here, eh? Um, tuning standards of 432 versus 440. This has been a, a hot topic. Well, it's been a topic of people that this was the natural sound that people can relate to. 
and it was changed to 440 during World War II or something like that. I don't really care when it happened. But if you go to YouTube and type in those two numbers, that versus that, that sounds so much better than that. And that's what all modern music is recorded in, in 440. If you go to an old vinyl album, a long play vinyl album, um, I actually worked for a, a company that played indoor music, played music, and I said, why don't we record it in 432? Because it sounds better, people are going to be happier, it's going to resonate better, it's going to vibrate better with them. Um, and the guy I spoke to was a, a big up boss, he said, this is a great idea, yep. He went and had a look, he actually phoned me and said, I've, I've found an old Led Zeppelin album that I've got, which is 432 hertz, the sound is spectacular. And then it gets to the top of the chain, which is owned by mm, them, and it just gets squashed, and I never hear anything again. It was almost like he had stumbled across something that it's not supposed to be known. So that kind of sucked. Um, so it goes through here. I'm not, I'm not going to go through there. Apparently they reckon it was changed by the Nazis, um, which I find really odd that nobody... Is this how to spell it? Ash Kinatsu. Well, maybe that's why it was changed to 44. But that's not the way to spell it. Give me a second. I forgot to mention this one. Uh, megahertz. Now, phonetically, so it's spelt megahertz. Okay, yep. But phonetically, it also can be pronounced megahertz. And allegedly, changing from 432, which is the natural sound of the human voice, to 440 would be just to slightly put you off. So it's a megahertz. I could be wrong. Probably am. Let's move along. That's the way to spell it. And can nobody, can nobody just scrub out that bit? Like, am I being nasty? Or am I just being Captain Bloody Obvious? Like, come on. Oh, hang on. <laughs> Why don't we just throw a V in front of it? <laughs> oh, stop it. And I think it gets better. I'm pretty sure it does. Yeah, it does. It, it does. Like, really? Isn't that, isn't that enough? Like, but anyway, um, <laughs> let's go to, here's the, about the, the A44 pitch standard. It was known, A40, like it's 44, like it means, like, go and look at Zachary's channel for, um, for all those 44s. But it's called the oh, come on the Stuttgart pitch. Oh, the Stuttgart pitch. Okay, of course it is. Um, and as we do, once again, all the way down to the first sentence. The first full stop is there. We copy that. Now I want you to note here. Obviously, there's a one there, and we'll throw this in here. And see what we get up. Uh oh. 667. You take out that one. It's 666. You know Mozart was a Freemason? And just in case you're new, thanks for joining. Masonry Wikipedia. And all you do is grab the first sentence of that as well. Down to there. And then you throw that in here and press go you get it as well yeah yeah but how would i know anything like it just it just gets a little bit frustrating but when you have to sit here and type in the word masonry and it's 33 and then you put in 33 Degrees, any reason why you don't want to spell that for me? 33 degrees is 33 and 33 and a third. Also, uh, on music, 
they used to have the albums running at 33 and a third. 33 and a third. And a third is 33. 33% of angels, blah, blah, blah. Because this whole entire world is controlled by 1%. Anyway, that's what that it's all about. Um, what else did I have here? Oh, this dude here. All right, this is what we'll finish up with. This is Bill Casing. Bill Casing was an American writer who claimed that the six Apollo moon landings between July, blah, 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 were hoaxes, and so the founder of the moon landing conspiracy theories. Once again, in case you're new, the word conspiracy theories... is 66 a weaponized word used against the truth community after kennedy but also if you want to break this word down phonetically like the phonetians and your phone you get the which is the most commonly used word in the world which is 33 you get all o's the 15th r's the 18th which is 33 then you get the IES. S is the 19th. E is the 5th. So that's 24 plus I is the 9th. That gives you 33. So you get three 33s in the word theories. Like, mm hmm, I guess. Because IES, so it's I's. I guess. The I's have it. Or is it just your third? Oh, good on you. Is it just your third eye? <laughs> your higher self just tapping on the shoulder and saying, Hey, have a look at Zish. Um, but anyway, um, he's a conspiracy theorist. I'm not going to bother doing anything else in here, but... Um, the only last thing to do is to cue the scary music. God bless you all. Oh, and by the way, his name isn't Bill Casing, it's William Casing. I'm the dude. Never say anything bad about the few.
It doesn't matter who we are. That doesn't matter. What matters is our plan. Releases her 33,000 email. Execute. Order. 66. It's a boy. I found a card hidden deep inside our own language system. Oh, oh, they, they're using our own language against us. And the clock is ticking. 